All right, hi everyone, how's it going? And welcome to another video. So today I'm here at the Tippa Canoe Battlefield site. As you can see right there, there's the visitor center adjacent to the battlefield site. You also have a very large memorial that commemorates those who died in the battle. Some of their graves are right near the memorial various generals and officers that were killed in this battle. But this right here is an 80 foot tall obelisk and it commemorates, like I said, those who had died in this battle. Now, most people have probably heard the campaign slogan, Tippecanoe and Tyler too, that was William Henry Harrison's campaign slogan. Probably one of the most famous campaign slogans in all of American history. I mean, who knows if hope and change and make America great again will stand the test of time, but pretty much in the history books you'll still see mention of the campaign slogan, Tip a Canoe and Taylor too. And the history books sometimes, probably a lot of times, we'll mention maybe in a paragraph or two this battle itself. Now some background info on this battle. This battle involved the Native American chief Tecumseh, Shoney chief, and he was establishing a real large confederacy to attack white settlers as well as the U.S. Army. So he was trying to rally up all these Native Americans from various Great Lakes tribes, you know, tribes around the Midwest, like the Potawatomi, the Chippewa, the Sauk and Fox, the Winnebago, the Shoney, of course, and, you know, a number of other tribes as well. And he was working on establishing this huge confederacy. He was only kind of getting started around the time this battle took place. Initially, his main headquarters for this operation were in Ohio. He had then been kicked out of Ohio. He came to right around here, right around where I'm standing right now, and established a village called Prophetstown. And that served as Tecumseh's main headquarters for the military campaigns he wanted to launch against the U.S. And at this time, he was actually being supported by the British. They were supplying him with a lot of goods, as well as ammunition. And at this time, the governor of the Indiana Territory, because Indiana wasn't a state at this time, it was actually a territory, the governor was William Henry Harrison. And he had met with Tecumseh. And the thing with Tecumseh is he had this idea. Other Native Americans had had this idea before him. And that was that he felt that if Native American land was going to be given to white settlers, all... Native American tribes should agree to hand over the, this land, not just a few tribes. And then, apparently, William Henry Harrison made some remark to the effect of, well, why don't they all speak the same language then? And negotiations kind of fell apart. So, what happened was Tecumseh continued to increase his confederacy of tribes and William Henry Harrison began to rally up you know the state militia there were also some you know troops from the army itself but a lot were also militia troops they had about a thousand men and they encamped right around where I'm standing right now was where there was where they were encamped and what then happened, I think it was around 4 in the morning, November 11th, 
1811, they were attacked because what the Native Americans were hoping to do is they're hoping to get William Henry Harrison himself. And if they could get him, they hoped that they would immediately win the battle and everything would kind of fall apart. So they launched a preemptive strike on William Henry Harrison's troops who were encamped right in this area. And a battle ensued, and the battle lasted about two hours. Eventually, the Native Americans began to run out of ammunition, and the U.S. troops managed to push them back, and the Native Americans fled. Now, about 63 U.S. troops were killed in this battle, which was more than the number of Native Americans killed in the battle. No way to know the exact number of Native Americans killed, but it's believed that more U.S. troops were killed. However, the Native Americans were forced to flee, and the U.S. troops in turn burned Prophets, Prophets Town to the ground. So... Initially, it didn't appear that the battle was that decisive, and it was actually considered to be a loss for William Henry Harrison. It was actually regarded as a lost battle, because it was believed that it wasn't that decisive. The U.S. lost more men, but then later on, it was realized that Tecumseh really could not recover from this battle, so as a result... It was usually seen as a victory for William Henry Harrison. And, you know, like I said earlier, he used it as his campaign slogan when he ran for president and won the presidency in 1840, I believe it was. And, you know, he's, most people, a lot of people may know this, his term as president was the shortest in American history. I think it was like 31 days. He died, I believe, from pneumonia that he actually caught at his inaugural ceremony. So, yeah, that's pretty much all the info surrounding this event. Uh, Just kind of wanted to do a video on it. You know, because after this battle happened, yeah, Tecumseh was never able to really regain the power that he was getting with his confederacy. The fact that they were, it was seen that they retreated and it was seen as kind of a defeat caused some Native Americans to not want to join the confederacy. So, and also. What happened is he eventually ended up siding with the British and would continue to side with the British in the War of 1812, which is where Tecumseh was actually killed in a battle that took place, I believe, somewhere in Ontario, Canada. But, uh, yep, that's all I've got. If you've watched this video, as always, I thank you for watching. Have a great day.